Hey everybody, I am so excited to be live here with you today. It is such a dreary, cold, rainy day in Richmond and I just need more sunshine in my life. So thank you for being here because you are my sunshine. I'm gonna talk about compression gloves today, but I also wanted to show you, so if you were on my stories today, and also I live in the city, and you might hear an ambulance going by. We, this happens like probably eight times a day. So we need a lot of white noise in our house for sleep. Um, I'm gonna talk about compression gloves today, but before I get started with that, earlier, like maybe six hours ago, I showed you what my hair looked like as soon as I took the heatless curls out. And I'm happy to say that it has finally calmed down a little bit. So this is like, what it tends to look like. Um, and again, the heatless curls, go back and watch my stories um, if you haven't yet, but the heatless curls are like a lovely way to style your hair without having to like hold a blow dryer or hold like a curling, um, a curling rod for a long time and that can help to decrease the strain on your hands. So I told you I would show you, I told you I was gonna go live and show you my hair. And this is it after like six hours of settling. So, Compression gloves. I'm like super excited to talk about this today because it's been on my mind a lot. We've been talking about this a lot in Hypermobile Hands Blueprint and Healthy Hands Academy. I've also sent you out like a newsletter about it. I've done a blog post. So I really wanted to hop on today and talk about compression gloves. If you have any specific questions about compression gloves, and there's a lot of different ways to provide compression to your hand. Today I'm only talking about compression gloves. So if you have, if you have any questions um, and you want them answered, right here today in this like little 20 minute live. Um, let me know, just drop them in there and um, near the end I'll just take a peek at the chat. So I first just wanna talk about like why people love compression gloves. So gentle compression can actually help to reduce your, your perception of your pain. Let me ask you this, if you like bump your head like on a surface or like, I don't know, I feel like I'm always bumping my head. I think I'm just really tall. <laughs> I'm six feet tall. So I'm always like bumping my head on the counter or like, I don't know, I, I'm not tall enough where like my head's like hitting the doorway. But if you bump your head, what is like the first thing that you do? I go to rub my head wherever I bumped it. And we even teach our children to rub their boo-boos in. Why? because this feeling of deep pressure, when I rub my boo-boo in, when I rub my head, that feeling of deep pressure can actually help to like send overwhelming information to our brains. So then our brain doesn't process the pain as much. Like it really dampens the pain and instead we're processing that deep pressure input. So in a similar way, if your hand joints are just feeling sore and tender, and your hand, they're sending pain signals to your brain, wearing a compression glove can actually help to reduce like how much your brain is interpreting that pain because instead it's interpreting the feelings of like a nice hand hug from that gentle compression. So one of the reasons why you should care about compression is because gentle compression can reduce your pain. Compression gloves can also help to improve your circulation. So let me ask you another question. When you're outside in the cold, like I said, today's a very dreary, rainy day. It's like not cold enough to be snowing. It hasn't snowed here yet. <laughs> um, but if you're outside in the cold, if I was outside today for a long time without gloves on, um, how, how would your hands feel? How would my hands feel? Um, I'm willing to bet that they would feel like cold and sore and achy and painful. So that's because our hands aren't having like enough circulation in them. And so when we don't have enough circulation to our hands, um, this is how they can feel. And so compression can help to increase our circulation in our hands. Um, improved circulation in our hands can also help to get 
like the good stuff into our hands and into our cells. So what I mean by that is when we have more blood flowing, when we have um, more things like circulating in our whole body, not, not just our hands, but we're just talking about hands today. Um, when we have more circulation in our hands, it can actually help to bring like the good healing agents into our cells and it can help to like flush the bad stuff out. So improved circulation um, is, is absolutely a good thing. And also, there's like, there's a huge link between chronic conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and poor circulation in your hands. And so improving circulation using compression gloves can be hugely beneficial. So compression gloves um, also improve joint proprioception. What do I mean by that? Proprioception is simply your brain's awareness of like where your joint or where your body part or your body is in space. So if we're thinking about our hands, um, oftentimes with hypermobile people especially, um, but I have also seen this with people with arthritis in their hands, there's like a lack of connection there between their brain and like where their hand is. Um, and that would be like a decreased sense of proprioception. So things just might be flying out of your hands, not necessarily due to weakness, although weakness can also make you drop things a lot, um, but it might just be due to like a decreased proprioception. Your brain is having a hard time like understanding where that hand is in relation to the rest of your body. And so wearing compression gloves, um, again, it provides that deep, like that pressure input. And then our brain is getting more sensory information about our hand in general when we wear compression gloves. Um, and so that can help to improve our proprioception, like our awareness of where our hands are in space. And so this might mean that like, you might notice when you're wearing your compression gloves that you're like dropping items less or that you're like having just like more coordination in general. And that's because compression can improve that proprioception. And then lastly, this is like probably what most people think about when they think about compression, is that of course, compression can also decrease swelling. So our extremities, and especially like our hands and our feet, um, often get more swelling than like the rest of our body because they are the farthest away from our heart. Um, so if you like notice that your hand is feeling puffy, um, if you're like walking with your hands down by your sides um, and you're feeling like they're puffy and stiff um, and you like hold your hand up and you notice they're just kind of puffy or if you if you push on them, um, you can notice like a little indentation, like an indentation might stay for, I mean, 10 seconds up to like a few minutes. That would be very swollen if it's staying for a few minutes. Um, then compression can absolutely also help to bring that swelling, that extra fluid out from your hand and back into where it belongs, back into your lymphatic system to where it needs to be back into the rest of your body. Um, so those are like the four reasons why you should definitely consider compression gloves if you haven't yet. Um, I also wanted to talk about like different considerations with compression gloves. So if you are thinking about compression gloves, um, just a couple things that you can consider before you purchase. Um, and I do have an Instagram post about this um, from last week, if you want to like swipe through that as well, but talking about it and like showing you the gloves themselves is also super fun. I only have two gloves to show you today, um, but there are so many other options out there. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna think about is like the finger length. And what I mean by that is like how far up does the glove stop on your hand? Um, there are some gloves that's, that keep your fingertips open. Um, there are even some gloves that stop down here and that they leave like your entire finger free. Those might be beneficial for if you're like a knitter or a sewer, or you really need a lot of your fingers and that sensation from your fingers to do like a craft or something like that. And so that's when like the, the glove that keeps all of your fingers open from down here would be beneficial. Um, there are these regular, like I would say most gloves are like open fingertip like this and my fingers are just like totally abnormally long, but most of them would come up to more of like my top knuckle. But again, I just, I'm really tall. I've got really long fingers. And this is nice because I can touch my phone. Um, I can still interact with our like technology driven world. But they also do make 
closed fingertip gloves. Let's see. Got one for each hand. So this is a closed fingertip glove. This is called an isotoner glove. This one's from Grace and Abel. So this one is like a super cute color. Grace and Abel um, has super cute colors. So if you, if beige medical, and we're gonna get to colors in a minute, but I guess I'm talking about it now. If the beige medical color makes you wanna barf and you're sick and tired of wearing beige things, Definitely check out different color options. Grace and Abel has like a teal or like an aqua and a blush pink and a heather gray and like this plum purple and so many other cute colors. So color is definitely another consideration. You can also find like a whole ton of different colored compression gloves on Amazon as well. Um, but back to the finger length. So as you can see, this one is like covering all of my fingers. So this would be very less than ideal for interacting with my phone or this technology driven world. I also have seen closed fingertip gloves that have like, you know those winter gloves that have like the touch screen pads on the index finger and thumb? I've seen those, there's not too many, but I think they're getting more on the market because they're realizing that <laughs> we just can't do this all day. Um, but closed fingertip gloves are great for if, if you're noticing, like, let's say you have an open fingertip pair of gloves, but you're noticing that you're getting like really, really puffy in the fingertips. So like here is like n normal or less swollen, but you're getting fluid pooling in here. Then closed fingertip gloves would probably be the best fit for you. Again, I would look for the kind that has like that touch pad here and here, or um, some people just really like to sleep in the closed fingertip ones, um, if that's comfortable to you. My fingers are so long that like, honestly, this feels just too awkward because my fingers stop like here. Like I just, gloves and I just like don't work out. Um, but the open fingertip ones are comfortable because they do come all the way down. Um, so those are just some considerations. Um, the finger length, the color, and then also they do make some with like a non-slip grip. So if you are wearing these during the day and you don't want things flying out of your hand or like let's say you already have a lot of things flying out of your hands, you're dropping things a lot, um, or you know, you're driving with your compression gloves on but it's feeling slippery, then have, finding some with a non-slip grip option could also be very helpful. So they make, there's so many different like brands and types of like non-slip grip compression gloves. I've seen the copper brand I believe has like non-slip grip that like kind of has like these lines across. And I've also seen ones that are more textured with dots across. Um, the owner of Grace and Abel, this company that has the cute colors, um, they are in the works of making uh, a non-slip grip compression glove, or I think that's something they want to do this year. Um, so non-slip grip is great too. It's also great like if you rely on a wheelchair or a walker and like for your mobility, um, and it can be really hard to like grip an assistive device with just like cotton. That's helpful too. Um, but basically what it comes down to is like really understanding what you're gonna be using your compression gloves for, like which activities you feel that you need them most for, and then sort of like figuring out, okay, like let's say I wanna use, I wanna wear a compression glove while I crochet, so I know that I need like fingers all the way open, or I want to wear my compression gloves when I drive, because my hand hurts a lot when I drive. You definitely would wanna look for gloves that are probably open fingertip, but then have like the non-slip grip. So really think about like your activities, think about like what, you know, what activities you want to use your compression gloves for and then let that be your guide um, as you search for compression gloves. All right, let me see this chat. Hello, I'm having trigger thumbs after pregnancy. Is it common? Any tips? Um, yes, yeah, so pregnancy, so it sounds like you are your postpartum now, like you've had your baby, congratulations. Um, pregnancy in general can cause like more swelling and more inflammation in the body um, and trigger finger is like a result of increased inflammation, specifically like underneath one or multiple of your fingers. I guess for your thumb it would be like down here. And I have um, a free guide for trigger finger exercises. So if you go to the link in my bio, 
um, after this training and then click on, I think it's bust your trigger finger exercises. I've got a PDF guide that has, I think five exercises, three of which are for like your fingers up here and then two of which I believe are for your thumb. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. I feel like the fully covered gloves could be used in place of winter gloves. Yeah, they could. These are these are like a thinner material, so it definitely depends on like how cold it gets and um, like what your hands tolerance is to cold. Um, the, because these are thinner, um, I probably wouldn't. I mean, again, I don't really wear gloves in general, but I tend to like like a softer glove. Um, but if you live in like a not so cold climate or you're not outside a lot, like definitely compression gloves. They do just keep your your hands warmer in general. Um, I also have seen, have you guys seen the gloves? They're not compression gloves, but they're just like winter gloves that like have like a heating system built into them. Like I'm super, super interested in them. Then they also make these electric hand warmers. So they're kind of like those like hot hands things that you like shake and rub. Um, and you could like, I guess, stick in your gloves or in your pockets, but instead they're like reusable or they're like, you can um, charge them and plug them in. Um, let's see, I see another comment. Okay, you're, this is the same person who asked about trigger thumb. You had your boy six months ago. Congratulations, mama. Us moms use our hands in such abnormal ways, especially like, it was just, it's just such a shock. It was such a shock to my system to have my first kid and especially to my hands. Like that's when a lot, honestly most of my hand pain started was after I had my, my daughter. Um, first it started with carpal tunnel that went away. Yeah, carpal tunnel is pretty common in pregnancy. Um, and now you have trigger thumb in both. I started with my primary care doctor yesterday and they gave me naproxen and referred me to an orthopedic, but it's still bent a little bit. You hear a pop in, in the clinic. It's, are you getting, are you saying you're getting therapy? I hope you're getting therapy um, because if you have trigger thumb, definitely getting treated um, for trigger thumb can be really helpful. And if you catch it like on, in the earlier course, um, then it can help like, then you probably won't need surgery. Like if you catch it early and you do the things that your therapist tells you to do, then it, you're less likely to need um, trigger thumb surgery. Um, okay, I see one more question and then this will be the last one. I'm going to see an OT so I can try to get fitted for ring splints and try to get what I can covered by insurance. Tips on how to explain hypermobility issues to someone without any knowledge of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Uh, that's so tricky and honestly, the purpose of this is really about compression gloves. But I hear you and that's, I mean, that's really tricky. I really hope you get fitted for ring splints. It is tough to get ring splints covered by insurance. Tips on how to explain hypermobility issues. Um, off the top of my head really quick, and then we will go, is um, just trying, if they don't understand what hypermobility is, um, maybe ask them if they you know, could do a little bit of like <laughs> Googling prior to, or research prior to, if they obviously, oh, no worries. Obviously, if they can't do that, like, just kind of explaining like my fingers go back beyond what they what is normal or what is helpful like they like they passively can go so much farther than what is helpful and that puts me like in a lot of pain often like just trying to like really spell it out and also before just in general before you go into like any doctor's appointment it can be really helpful to just write down what you're thinking like prior to because at least for me when I get to a doctor they're like oh no, no, no. do you have any questions and I'm like no if I don't write anything down like I just it just goes out of my mind um so really trying to like write your thoughts down of like your very specific needs and this goes for anything um prior to that's probably my best tidbit the Ehlers Danlos Society website is a very good resource to share too. I definitely agree with that. Yes. Okay. Well, I hope that you found this helpful. This was super fun. Um, this has been like super on my to-do list to just share with you a little bit more about compression gloves because they really are such a good tool. And it's all about if you have a chronic condition that's putting your hands in pain or you're not able to use your hands as well. It truly is all about like 
learning different tools and strategies and knowing when to use them. And it takes time and practice and kind of like reflecting on your hands, like how they're moving, what's causing them pain, what you're having trouble with. Um, and so you're here and that's the first step and I'm really proud of you. And so hopefully compression is um, a tool that you can add to your pain flare toolbox um, and that you can start to use that if you aren't already. Thanks so much, guys. This is so much fun. I'll catch you later.